In this segment, I wanted to give you a couple more demonstrations of some of my developing in the develop module in Lightroom. Since we covered it in pretty good detail in the last example, I'm going to go through these a little bit more quickly. This is an image that I took on the Oregon coast as a brilliant sunrise was starting to appear in the sky. And the histogram shows that my capture included all of the highlight and shadow detail but some of the highlights are fairly washed out, but I think there's a lot of information that we can bring back here. Uh, just quickly check some different camera calibration settings just to see if there's one that I like better. And I think that camera faithful perhaps brings out more of those colors in the sky and in the orange rocks. Again, lens corrections, probably enable the lens profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, make sure that things are pretty level. That actually feels like it's tipping too far. I think the ocean is level, but I think I'm going to do that manually myself. I also want to make sure I don't over lighten my edges too much with that vignette removal. And just really quickly make sure that I don't have any additional fringing out here in the corners. I'm going to zoom in even further, and there's a little bit there. Use the defringe tool, see if it can find anything it identifies as fringe. So far it's not. Doesn't mean there's not fringe there, it's just not identifying it. So in that case, sometimes I will expand what it's doing and manually defringe. Okay, and then with that manual setting, let's go to the rotation and give a little slight rotation, but not too much. I think that looks pretty good. It's very slight, but I think that's going to help. Okay, um, now up to the Basics tab and do some basic white balance. Auto as shot, daylight, very cool, cloudy and shade. I think the auto setting is closest to what looks right to me. As shot was a little bit cooler. In fact, I think I'm going to stay with the as shot. I think the camera got it right. Okay, now I'm going to bring the highlights down a bit. And everything else there for now is looking pretty balanced. I'm going to come back and hit that some more with some of these uh, localized adjustment tools. And in fact, in this case, the biggest issue that I see is that I want to do a better balance of the brightness between the sky and the foreground. So I'm going to go now straight to the graduated filter. I'm going to reset. I'm going to dial in some negative exposure and drag that down. And then with that there, I'm also going to add in some highlight reduction, a little bit of clarity to give some more structure to the clouds, bring up the saturation a bit, and see what looks good. I think somewhere in there, perhaps. And make sure that the filter is set where I want it. Great. Next, I'm going to go to the radial filter and use this to dial in a little bit of positive exposure and use this to bring a little bit more focus into this foreground area. Something maybe a little bit like this. Reduce the feather on that filter. And now also uh, bring up the contrast in there a bit bring down the highlights a little bit, bring up clarity quite a bit, bring up saturation quite a bit, add some sharpness, some creative sharpening to that foreground, and I also want to maybe warm it up just a little bit in the foreground, so bring the temperature up a little bit. Okay, like I said, I'm going fairly quickly here. So to really get this right, you'd want to spend a decent amount of time see if I can just bring this in a little bit better to isolate it where I want it. Okay, and then finally I'm going to move over to the adjustment brush 
and I know that I want to work with this water area and add some more contrast and clarity into that but I'm going to need a pretty careful mask to do that so uh, I'm going to set my exposure to a little bit darker I'm going to turn on the auto mask and I'm going to turn up the flow and then I'll bring down the size of that mask and even the feathering just a little bit or the size of the brush rather and then I'm going to show the overlay so that as I paint I can see where that's going and I can hopefully create a nice mask that finds the edge of the rocks here and that's doing a pretty good job like I said this is pretty quick I would spend a lot of time and be very careful with this I think we got that good enough for what I'm trying to do so now with that water I want to work with bring up the highlights a little bit bring up the contrast quite a bit maybe bring up the exposure just a little bring up the clarity a lot and then maybe bring down the shadows a little bit just to continue increasing the contrast in there maybe something like that let me bring down the highlights just a little bit okay that adds a lot more punch to that water okay so I think that's pretty good so far now I can come back to my basics tab and continue to refine the adjustment and look at the current state of the histogram I see that I could bring up my whites a little bit I uh, might work with the highlights just a little bring up the overall clarity even a little bit more maybe work with vibrance a little bit here a little bit of saturation here and then move on the tone curve I think that I can even crispen up my highlights a little bit more give them a little more punch in the highlights and same with shadows I made the dark shadows or the darks I can bring up a little bit but then I'll bring the shadows down again looking at that histogram and at this point I think I will go back and even bring in my blacks and really set that black point because there are definitely parts of this image that are black and with the whites there aren't necessarily things I want to be pure white I don't think I want to blow out that sky to pure white so I'm gonna keep the whites down just a little bit now I can come down to hue saturation and luminance I can use the targeted adjustment tool I definitely want to bring down the luminance on some of these areas of the orange rock just a little bit they're a little too hot and maybe in the grays a little bit too and then I want to go to saturation and bring up the saturation of these oranges just slightly and also make sure that I'm hitting some of these colors that are up here in the clouds oh additionally with that luminance I may see if I can bring down the luminance in the sky in a couple spots just a little bit but not too much okay moving down to the detail tab this is where I would zoom in to hundred percent check the sharpness of various parts of the image probably bring up the sharpening to about 50 uh, there's a lot of really fine detail in this rock I might bring the radius down just slightly and then bring the sharpening up more and also see how much detail I want to add into that uh, oh that's way too much detail somewhere more like that and then zoom out and bring in the masking holding down the alt key so I can see the masking and make sure that the masking isn't happening in the smoother areas of the image or that the sharpening isn't happening in the smoother areas of the image and then I also will take a look at some of the noisier areas this is an ISO 400 image so I would expect a little bit more noise in this and I do see some luminance noise in these rocks here so I will add some luminance noise reduction and bring up the detail a little bit which allows me to get away with a little more luminous noise reduction and then I may increase my sharpening a little bit more because now I've lost some sharpening I'd want to spend time with that and make sure that I really had that dialed in correctly alright so I think that 
for the quick job I just did on that this one feels pretty good I'm gonna type the Y key so we can see the before and after so this is the image as it came out of my camera and this is the image after my adjustments I think that's really a great improvement on that image